Today I'm doing the reader profile book tag. Welcome to Candlewick Library, I'm Cheryl, and I was tagged by Charlene at Coffee and a Book, and this was originally created by Hillary B. Green. So there are 10 questions, I'm gonna get right to those. Number one is, what makes a good book? Obviously, this is supposed to be only what I think, so I'm not saying what I think makes a good book for everybody. What makes a good book for me is something that, well, there's a couple of different categories, actually. There's the books that just are really fun to read. Just reading them is a joy. It makes me laugh, or I get so wrapped up in the story, it's just a really fun ride. And then there's the books that make me better, or make me go and research more things. If I have to stop reading to go and look up a painting, or look up a place, or look up a person, or look up anything, and that sends me on a rabbit hole of research, I actually think that makes a really good book because it's inspired me and it's created curiosity and if I learn something from a book, I really love that. Pretty much anything that makes me really engaged in the reading process, whether that is just the fun, or that is finding out more, or being inspired to do something or be better. Number two, what are you currently reading? Right now I'm reading Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, that's a play. I'm reading Loyally Luke by Pepper Basham. I'm reading a book called Romance by Heidi St. John that's about marriage with homeschooling. I'm reading Joy in Christ's Presence by Charles Spurgeon. And with my daughters in homeschool, I'm reading quite a few books. And then I am also rereading right now uh, one of the books my daughter wrote. Number three, what is the last book you did not finish and why? I'm gonna have to consult the reading journal for this. The last book that I DNF'd was called Habits for a Sacred Home and I cannot remember the author. And this was kind of a homeschooling and Christian book. And it was actually a really good book. I didn't DNF it because it wasn't. I already had books that had the same information and it was unnecessary to my personal development at this stage of homeschooling. Number four, what obscure book do you wish other people would read? Guys, I have a problem lately. I have a microphone so that I have better sound and I keep forgetting to put it on. The sound will be better for the rest of this video. Sorry about that. The Family Nobody Wanted by Helen Doss. I have to say this with kind of a caveat that I haven't read it for a long time, and I am planning on rereading it sometime soon, but this was about a pastor and his wife that adopt a bunch of kids, and it was my favorite book in fourth grade, even though it was an adult memoir, and I've never heard anybody else ever talk about it. So when I reread it, I'll see if it's still as good as I remember it. Number five, what is the largest book you've read? I've had this question before in other tags, and I think I said the Bible because I don't know what else it would be. There's quite a few books I've read that were over a thousand pages. I think Gone with the Wind was really big. There's been some fantasy books that were that long. The Stand by Stephen King, that's actually another book I'm wanting to reread soon. And I just bought it and it's really big. And I've read that before. Number six, if you could have dinner party with five fictional characters, who would they be? Anne Shirley, Gilbert Blythe. I guess I should say Anne Blythe and Gilbert Blythe. Spoiler. Joe, Joe March. It would be really interesting to have Hercule Poirot there in case something happened or Oh, you know what? How about Hercule Poirot and Sherlock and see how they react to each other. Number seven, those five books that you would want to have if you were stranded on a de deserted island. This is a question I always have a hard time answering because a lot of times the books I would want are part of a series and I'd want the rest of the series there. So I cheat and I will say if I give a book, then it has to be the whole series. And so then I would say the Harry Potter books, Anna Green Gables and Little Women, Jane Eyre, and of course the Bible. If, if you can't pick the Bible, then the fifth one would probably be, maybe the fifth one would be Jurassic Park because that's fresh in my mind and I enjoyed that. Number eight, what is one book that you could not put down? I've had lots of books that I couldn't put down. I'm gonna go way back. Instead of giving an answer that I would give right now of something recent, I'm gonna say that the first time I read the Hunger Games book, I could not put it down. I don't remember how fast I read it, but I remember going into it, not knowing anything about what it was about, and I could not put it down. Number nine, list five books or authors that you will never read. I'll never read the Throne of Glass books. I think that's what they are from Sarah J. Moss. Started reading the first one once and I could not get into it, but I read her Court of Thorns and Roses books. My personal opinion is that they're pornography. They were so over the top graphic. I know that I wouldn't have finished the series today if I was reading it. That was a few years ago. And so knowing the kind of content that makes its way into her books, I know I'll never read anything by her again. That's one. You could probably put all the people that are new books that have that kind of content in them. 
that I know I won't read because I can't think of anybody right off the top of my head besides her because it's something I tried. But I know that I see other books that people rave about online and then I read things that are in them and it's disgusting and so I know I'll never read those books. So I'll just say anything that is modern book published that is very graphic in lots of different ways. I won't read any of those. Number 10, if you were to write a book, what would it be about? Well, I did write a book. I've written a few books. My most recent book I wrote a couple of years ago for my daughter because she was doing a cryptology course for homeschool and I wanted to try to find a book where kids were figuring out puzzles and things along the way, but I wanted it done in a way where she could do it with them and I couldn't find anything like that and so I wrote it. I am working on the sequel right now because both of my daughters have read it and liked it. It's about five kids that go to an island for a cryptology camp. There's that. I also would love to be able to write historical fiction but I just don't know if that is what I'm good at. My dream, ever since I was eight years old, I believed I was going to be an author, and I don't know if I'm ever going to do anything with anything I write, though, but we'll see. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm gonna tag book zealots. So if you guys haven't done this yet, and you want to, then that would be awesome. And thanks again, Charlene, for the tag.